Hi everyone and welcome to the latest installation of Planet Studio Tutorial. I always say it, but this has been longer in the making than I'd hoped. Uni, graduation and starting work in aerospace have kept me pretty busy for the second half of 2022. However, I've got a lot of comments and requests asking for another episode covering some of the topics that we didn't discuss in the first six episodes, so here goes. The list of topics I've already covered is getting pretty long, so I'm not going to go through it now. But you can find some information in the description of each tutorial video, or if you want, just ping me a message on Discord if there's a specific topic that you're looking for. In this episode, we'll look at textures. I'll freely admit at this point that textures aren't my personal strongest point in Planet Studio, so if there is anything more that anybody wants to add, please feel free to post in the comments. We'll start with splat textures, which are a very powerful way to improve the apparent detailing and the character of your creations. Then we'll move on to tiling levels. Finally, we'll take a proper look at creating and applying planetary rings. This episode will be a bit shorter than usual, but I hope that it will be helpful. So, first of all, splat textures. From my experience, splat textures are often underutilised in many Planet Studio creations. In some ways, they're very easy to get working, as a final pass to improve the detail. Some very strong examples of splat usage are present in the stock system. I think my favourite has to be the crack structures on Boreas. Using splat textures can be really simple. They're selected per sub-biome in the Biomes tab. So you can see over here we've got, for example, the desert texture selected. Um, and then for the second sub-biome we've got the mountain one selected. And it's worth noting at this point that a separate texture can be used for the slope and for the standard terrain in each sub-biome. The available textures can be viewed in the Textures tab. In this tab, each texture available for the celestial body can be viewed and then additional textures can be loaded from game files or from local files. The strength of the splat texture can be adjusted to get the right balance between detail and overblown contrast. Colour adjustment also provides a way to tune the appearance of the terrain further. It will overall lighten or darken the splat texture. It can be really useful for fine-tuning the lightness to prevent unrealistic black or white patches in the texturing. Do be warned though, if you increase the colour strength too much, and then the strength later on in the tiling as we'll see soon, you will find that these are unavoidable. The game has a set of default splat textures which cover many possibilities, but of course if you do want something a bit more unique, there are also some great websites where you can download royalty-free textures in all sorts of resolutions. One key consideration when using splat textures is the tiling. A splat is seamless and will be repeated many times in a grid over the surface of the celestial body. Because players will be going from orbital heights right down to walking on the surface, it is necessary to have a scaling method for this tiling grid. In game, this is controlled in really the same way as the levels of detail for the terrain. As you get closer to the planet, the grid will get finer, and the splat will be pasted onto the surface in the region around the camera many more times. While the game does have a default setting for these tiling levels, which can be used in many situations, it can also be unsatisfactory, so it's worth learning how to tweak the tiling to get smooth transitions and the right strength level at all distances. The resolution of your splat texture will be important here. For a larger splat file, it might be that you want a coarser tiling overall. So a good first step is to tweak the scaled UV per face size slider until the scale of the texture looks right when on the surface. You might find it helpful to load in a druid and walk around on the surface to get an idea of how your texture will look. The tiling levels are then loaded in as distance from the camera increases, or rather distance from the surface when you're moving upwards. So the easiest way to test splat tiling with that in mind is to select a position on the surface, zoom in or out, and watch how the texture will gradually retile as the distance decreases or increases. If things aren't looking right, use trial and error to determine which levels need editing. 
it can often be really easy to find the problem level. Just change the strength to 100 in one of these for a very clear visualisation of where that level is loaded. I would recommend though getting a screenshot of the tiling configuration before you begin doing this, as you will rebuild or just edit many times and you'll be changing a lot of strength values. So for example, let's set the strength of this tiling level here to 100. We'll then rebuild to ensure that that has been applied. And now we'll zoom in. Now I think that's pretty obvious. You can see at what point this tiling level is loaded in. So we can see that applies to 4 in the scaled section. And you can see as we get closer that that is then replaced by tiling level 8 in this region. We can see outside we've got a tiling level of 2 around here. So let's say for example that you had a really nasty looking transition here. It would be really easy to edit this one now because you know that this is the problem level. So we'll just reset that to 1 and click to get that back to normal again. Jumps in strength values will cause an obvious change and make the detail look unnatural. For example, if we did something less extreme and took this to detail 5, you can see that this just looks wrong. There's a very strange sort of transition around this point, which is then replaced by a sort of smooth, almost donut effect at this point that moves with the camera in a really odd way. Just solve this really by keeping your strength changes smooth over the tiling levels. So for example here we could go with 0.95 or just 1, which seems to be quite satisfactory as you can see here. Another typical issue is a very sudden transition from large splat features to very fine detailing. Now it doesn't occur too much on this planet as I've worked hard to remove it, but quite often when you go from these non-scaled to scaled levels, you'll see quite an odd change. It might just about be visible through the YouTube compression here. If this occurs, try changing the tiling value in the left-hand column for the problem levels. Normally the cause is an irregular jump in value. For example, if we went to 50 suddenly here, you would see we'd go from very large coarse texturing to suddenly very fine texturing. Finally, if the overall scale is still feeling wrong, you can use the distance scalar value down at the bottom to affect the overall scaling curve, and then use the distance adjustment, which is input in meters there, to offset the scaling distances for really fine tuning. Personally, I'm a big fan of using strong textures at distance. If applied correctly, this can really improve the apparent sharpness and detail of the celestial body, and at those distances where the cube map terrain really will be looking its weakest. However, this is again one of those parts of Planet Studio which will take some time to get right, and there is a lot of room for personal taste here. Next, let's take a look at generating ring texture files. This topic has been requested several times, so I want to cover it properly. I recommend using GIMP to generate the textures. It is free, and it doesn't take up too much device space. For my simple brain, it's also easier to learn than Inkscape, although I know that Pedro will disagree if he watches this. So before we begin, just a quick recap of how the game makes rings. The texture file should look a bit like a long barcode, which the game extends in a circle around the planet. It isn't really necessary to have any more than one pixel height for the texture, and the length of the texture is dependent on how high res you want the rings to be. In general though, the wider that you want the rings to be in terms of planet radius, the longer you will need the ring texture to be. As you can see on the screen, I've already created a base image ready for use. Um, it's not normally necessary to use large file sizes. Here I've gone with a 500 by 50 pixels to start with. The main thing to watch out for here though is transparency. I've seen quite a few planets with the blank spaces between their ring elements filled in with black which can look a bit odd to be honest. There's an easy solution to this though by making two layers for the file. On the right hand side you can see I've made a base background layer filled in with black so that we can see what's being painted on. And then we've got on the foreground, although it's called background in this case, um, a completely transparent layer. Um, this is the one that we'll be painting onto. So we need to ensure that this is the one which is selected as we begin to paint. 
Uh, let's start by just adding some random rings. It isn't really necessary to make any of these um, into proper lines down the, the, the height of the texture, so we'll just be cropping it down in a bit. So what we're going to go with first of all is a sort of medium brightness um, main ring in the center. It's going to be quite broad. Uh, we'll reduce down the size of that for a couple of smaller rings. They'll sort of flow together a bit. Like so. Uh, I'm just generally trying to keep it centered so we'll then take a crop through the center of that. And then we're going to just reduce our brightness right down um, for a sort of large internal one. It often adds to the interest if you sort of let these flow together a little bit I find. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just have a very faint sort of outer ring section just to get that interest out that end. Right. So one thing just remember we've got the, the left to right. This is the um, planet's surface if you like to so the planet side um, and this is a space side so the the texture is going to be wrapped I'll just get rid of that large circle it's going to be wrapped around like follow so following the cursor and uh, so yeah that hopefully will make sense and um, the next thing that we've got to do is crop this down uh, so we're just going to hit the crop command there um, we're going to try and center that so that we get sort of all of those rather irregular blobs which I've colored in um, we're going to try and go with about three pixels high, uh, is really all I need. Um, so what we could do at that point then is just press enter, um, hide the background black layer, uh, and then we'll be good to go. But what I want to do um, is to use a technique which I discovered a little while back, which really helps to give that extra little bit of detail to the rings without having to go overboard with hours worth of painting. So if we're going to noise here, HSV noise, um, I don't know if it'll let me zoom in with that open. Yep, yeah, there we go. You can see it's rendering a little bit of noise here. Um, now if we, we're going to turn the hue down to naught, because in this one we've we've not got any colours involved, and we're again um, working in black and white, so what I want to do is turn the saturation down as well. And we're just going to up the value a little bit, make this noise a bit rougher, like so. So I'm, I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to press OK. So this is just affecting the areas where we've actually got um, the brush marks down, because of course the background of this um, is actually transparency, and it, it can't apply a noise to a transparency. So that is done now, so what we're going to go ahead, we're going to do this cropping, um, and then we'll get that ready to be put into Planet Studio. So we're going to take this down to three pixels high. What that will do, the game effectively, from what I can find out, averages uh, the texture over the height of these pixels. So what this will do is just gently reduce the harshness of that noise to just give some more um, layers of detail to it. So what we're just going to do there now is press enter. Uh, we're going to crop the image to content. And then what we'll do is we'll disable the layer like so. And then we'll just export this like so. I recommend not really using compression. To be honest, I don't understand some of this stuff, but I have found uh, if you have the compression turned up, those very faint details, because we're working in quite low brightnesses here, and you want really smooth transitions to black. Or transparency I should say uh, you want to keep the compression level down from what I've seen so then we're ready to export and we'll jump over to Planet Studio in just a minute to see how that looks and here we are back in Planet Studio uh, with uh, ESS Phoebe loaded up so on the rings tab we first of all will need to import the image of the rings now I've already done that uh, but it's nice and easy. Uh, just pressing this blue browse button here will open up Windows File Explorer. Then you can select that and get the texture loaded in. So we'll close that. We've got the texture loaded in and I'm happy with the inner and outer radius values here. So then we're just going to rebuild the planet. And there we have it. You can see the slight variations in the otherwise smooth rings. 
Um, if I say so myself, I think these are very nice for the very small amount of effort that we put in. And you can see we've got good transparency. The stars are showing through even the brighter regions of the rings, which is how it really should look, in my opinion. For coloured rings, it's exactly the same process. Uh, bearing in mind that the lightness and the saturation can be exaggerated in game, you can see how bright some parts of these rings are. And we were using quite low values, really, for our brightness. You might find it helpful to tweak the layer saturation and lightness several times and export a set of possible rings uh, with helpful file names perhaps and then test them all to get the one that looks best. And that's all for episode 7 of Planet Studio Tutorial. I know that there are many other topics which have been requested and I will try to cover them as soon as I can. I hope this episode was helpful though and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.